this is video log number 100. It's been 100 days since the aliens invaded and dropped the bird flu infested clown zombies. I was prepared for that contingency. As a prepper, of course, you would prepare for that. Uh, so the very next day, I started my fortifications and, of course, gardening. Now, I'd never gardened before. It's been a bit of a rough go. Uh, steep learning curve, I, I suppose. Uh, but this morning, I finally started uh, reaping the rewards from that garden. I uh, just harvested 20 pumpkins. This is the largest of, of the pumpkins. Um, this is smaller than I anticipated. I don't know if this is going to work out. Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. We're in my garden right now because I wanted to give you an update on how things are going in the garden. I'm always talking about how important it is to be practicing your skills that you plan to use during a collapse situation before the collapse situation. And I think none of those is perhaps as important as gardening because there is a lot to learn. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of error you need to get out of your system uh, before you become a, a, success, a successful gardener. I'm still learning. There's things I'm uh, you know, getting better at every year and, um, and it's, it's important to just get those trial and error situations, you know, as much as possible out of the way before collapse uh, when, you know, if I have a, a failure in my garden now, it's just kind of like, oh, well, that didn't work. If you have a failure in your garden during a collapse and you're depending on that garden for food, then, you know, you could starve to death. So it's important to get that, that practice in before it's really, you know, your, your skin is really in the game. I've had some successes in the garden this year, and I've had some failures. Uh, I think one of the big successes is the squash back here. You can see the yellow flowers of the squash back over there. That's been doing really well this year. Uh, also, the peaches on the peach trees have been doing really well. I've had a lot, a lot of beans. I've done pole beans, German pole beans, and some bush beans. Those have all been pretty successful. Um, things that haven't been so successful are my potato crop. We really get hit by potato bugs this year. I really just massacred the leaves uh, and the tomatoes also have not done very well at all. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for the tomato uh, failures. One of them is that I just wasn't able to get them out into the greenhouse. Uh, you know, as seedlings started that early because I was getting attacked by chipmunks in the greenhouse and they were just destroying anything I put out there. Uh, so they got a bit of a late start. And also, once I actually put them into the garden, uh, I was busy cutting firewood. I was doing a lot of firewood uh, chopping and I neglected the garden at the beginning. It got kind of weedy and the weeds grew up and over those tomato plants and they just, you know, they weren't getting the sun that they really needed. Also this summer has been fairly wet and overcast uh, for a lot of it and tomatoes love hot, dry weather where you're, you know, watering them uh, from, uh, from below but they're getting that really, that really uh, nice dry heat from above. So it hasn't been an ideal year for tomatoes anyway. Um, but these are things that I'm learning. I, I think it's really critical to uh, not only uh, hone your skills as a gardener, but also find out what works really well in your area. Year over year, I'm finding out what are the crops that grow like weeds in my particular area right here. And those are the crops that I you know, choose to grow. All things being equal, why not grow something that pretty much grows itself? Oh, one thing that has worked really well this year uh, for me uh, that has helped with the garden is I have a new sort of watering setup. Now this is just a hose with a little sprinkler head on it and kind of does this, I attach it to a stick and I kind of move it around like that to, to water the garden. Now that's nothing really re revolutionary at all, it's just a hose. But what this is uh, hooked up to isn't the, the um, you know, my well and water pressure from the house. This is hooked up s specifically to my rain barrels. We're about 10 feet below the, the uh, maximum fill level of the rain barrels down here. I think it's something ar around the order of like seven pounds per square, uh, per square inch, like difference in water pressure the lower you get uh, from uh, where your rain barrels are. So we're, we're about 10 feet down from there. It has some decent water pressure. And I'm going to show you, uh, you know, back what we're doing up at the rain barrels to show you the setup that I've got going on this year. This is the first year I've really benefited from it. And I think it's something that's really worked well and I think it's something worth sharing. And here we are at the rain barrels where I do all my rainwater collection. Now, it's collecting from a section of roof that's about 25 feet by 25 feet. You know, you could do the math, 25 times 25, that's how many square feet of uh, roof I'm collecting from. And these guys will fill up uh, yeah, with even just a, a moderate rain for like an hour or so. Uh, they, they do really well and there are 
seven of these barrels. These are 60 gallon barrels. Uh, they're these, you know, I think they're used for like, you know, lawn maintenance or whatever. Uh, they come without lids, so I made these little plastic lids to keep mosquitoes from laying eggs on the inside of them. Uh, and, uh, you know, seven barrels times 60 gallons, you know, again, you can do the math uh, for how much water I store here. But this size works fairly well for me. I think it could be a little bigger. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's raining and these guys are maxed out and I don't have anywhere to put the rain. Uh, and, you know, every once in a while I feel like I wish I had a little bit more rainwater uh, when, when I am watering the garden. Uh, but largely speaking, this has worked out really, really well. Now, this is kind of a version 2.0 for me. Uh, well, probably even more than 2.0. I've had several incarnations of this. I started with just taking, I think I had two or three of these barrels, and I just parked them underneath the, the drip edge of the roof and had the, the, the roof, uh, you know, water just running into them. Later on, I added a gutter to the roof, and now you can see this little, this black pipe over here uh, collects the water from the, uh, the gutter and drops it all into this barrel, and that one use these two large diameter tubes to go into this big manifold and then that sends it out to the rest of the uh, barrels. I made a mistake at the beginning where I was using exclusively just hose fittings to connect all these guys together and that was a mistake because it, this main barrel was overflowing and it just could not get the water out to the other barrels fast enough. You, you think these are like uh, half inch diameter hose uh, sections here but uh, when, the, when the water actually goes to a fitting, the, the diameter of the hole is even smaller than a half an inch. I mean, it's, it's smaller than like the diameter of a little pinky finger. And if you imagine the diameter of a little pinky finger coming out of this main barrel and then being, having to be divided up seven ways to go out into all these other barrels, you could imagine how slowly these were filling. So I changed that by making a double bulkhead with a large diameter tube going into this manifold and then uh, disseminating out into all the barrels. I also have this fitting here, which uh, uh, is the on-off valve that uh, sends water directly down to the garden. That's what I was watering from earlier. And I even put a little spigot right here so I can get water uh, for convenience because it's, you know, these have lids on them. And if I'm over here and I want water, I want to have an access, uh, an access point to get it. But this has worked out really well. It's been a, a good size, I think. Uh, and um, it's fulfilled all my needs. Uh, the re you might uh, think it's kind of strange that I put a roof over this. Uh, you know, don't you want water to be falling right into the barrels? Well, the reason for the roof was for snow load. Uh, these are just left out in the winter, and if I didn't have a roof, all of these barrels would get covered in snow, and these plastic lids would all get, you know, dumped in and everything, and you want to keep these things dry in the winter because you, get, you, you can't have water in all these pipes and everything because it'll, it'll crack all the fittings. So that's why I have a roof over it to keep it, uh, keep the snow out and the water out so that in the winter the system can stay dry. But it's worked out really well for me. It's helped me to maintain my garden and I'm always learning, I'm always growing, I'm always developing. I think if I were to do a new version of this, I think what a, a great thing to be doing would be, now you might have seen I have uh, goldfish ponds in my greenhouse. I've done a few videos on those. I think it would be great to be watering the gardens from the goldfish ponds because they have algae and goldfish poop and everything which would be beneficial uh, organic material to be plumb down to the garden, I think it would be great to be watering the garden from directly from the goldfish pond and then use the rainwater to replenish the water in the goldfish pond. So you'd have clean water for the goldfish so you could actually see them. A lot of times my goldfish pond is pretty murky. Uh, and you would take that murkiness uh, and use it somewhere where it would actually be useful down in the goldfish pond. So I'm still growing, I'm still developing and coming up with uh, ways that I can improve you know, whatever I'm working on. I think that's the name of the game is just you know, be happy but never be content. That's, that still sounds bad, you know, just, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Keep striving for higher, but be, but be pleased with wherever you are at, at whatever given moment. So I'm pleased with where I am, but I'm always thinking about better things that I could do for improvement. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.